Gracious, having some technical difficulties this morning. Welcome back, everybody. It's Tuesday, a little after 11 a.m. Central. And on 11 a.m. Central on Tuesdays, we talk lead generation and conversion. I want to lead off this call by first talking about a lead generation opportunity that is readily available that I think many of you are not taking advantage of. And that is co-marketing each other's listings, both within uh, our brokerage and outside of our brokerage. Let me ask you this question. What agent that has any sense does not understand that the more exposure their listings receive, the better it is for their seller? Okay. So if you're listening and you have, or agents are prompted or inspired to reach out to you and you're a heavy listing agent in your market, and they say, hey, can I market your listing? Can I provide some extra exposure? Can I promote your open house? Can I promote your price reduction? Can I be a marketing partner? Your answer should be 100% yes. As long as it didn't cost you anything, and as long as they're not misrepresenting the listing or shining a bad light on it, I don't think there's any reason to say no whatsoever. It just doesn't make sense. So when agents reach out to me, I'm like, the more, the merrier. I would think our sellers would agree. So reach out, be courteous. Uh, I think it is just an act of courtesy these days um, with the expansion of the internet and expansion of social media that we just extend a courtesy. Hey, I would love your permission to market your listings. And when we get the permission, then we can market the listings on a much higher level, uh, like I was doing this morning and creating video content at these listings, long form and short form video content content for YouTube, Instagram Reels, Facebook uh, Reels and Stories, uh, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, you name it. Getting it all done uh, today. Got some uh, amazing footage that I will use across all platforms. Um, but before we get too much further into that, I mean, if you're one of these agents out there that is like clinging to this, my listing, my lead, um, it's really an assumption at this point because that all went out the window with Zillow and Realtor.com and Homes.com. They are using our listings. I mean, no, everybody knows this to um, grow their business. They're selling leads back to us that they're using our listings to generate in the first place. Um, so you got to let that go. You got to let that go. Um, and if you are a proactive agent or if you get contacted rather by a proactive agent saying, hey, I want to market your listings. Let me see where there's some gaps in the marketing because I don't think we need to be doubling up or overlapping. But I think most agents out there, it's fair to say, especially heavy listing agents, they're more reactive agents. Okay, so they're going to put it in. This is just the traditional average agent out there that takes listings they're they're going to do three things they're the three p agent they're going to put the home in the mls they're going to put a sign in the yard and they're going to pray for another agent to bring them a buyer so this is just a way to do that to support three p agents on steroids you want me to bring the buyer well let me get in there and market it the way i know how to market it because you took pictures with your cell phone and i know how to take better pictures and create really nice videos just with my phone and editing through iMovie or Filmmaker Pro, and I'll get those out there and I'll do all the things you're not doing. Lives, shorts, reels, TikToks, YouTube shorts, YouTube videos, blogging, the whole nine yards, Craigslist, Facebook, Marketplace, you know, yada, yada, yada. Classifiedads.com, on and on and on. Maybe I might, uh, you know, do a boosted post. Maybe, you know, I might run some ads. Who knows, some paid ads, who knows? But if I'm offering to do that and you're a 3P agent, and all you're basically using is a yard sign in the MLS to sell the property, you need to invite me in and you could even introduce me to your seller as a marketing partner. Hey, I network. It, sellers love to work with agents that include them in the marketing process, interview them, ask them, go three deep with the questions, but they also want to know that you are a high level networker with other agents, other prominent agents in the marketplace. So they're going to love this idea. And I don't see what it hurts. If you're the other thing that I've heard some very, you know, 
selfish and and frankly ignorant agents say in in support of the my listing my lead argument um is that they just don't feel like any other agent should benefit lead wise from their listings even though they're not posting it or giving this added exposure to their seller so i believe there's a fiduciary issue there that could be raised um but if an agent is uh, going to stick to their guns and be simple and play small and say no, then move on to the next one. There's plenty of them out there that would love the support. Most of the time, the question I get, the, the most common question I get is, Jason, I'm interested, but it's how much is this going to cost? And when I say it costs you nothing unless I bring you a buyer, where is the where 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 is the potential calamity here what's the downside it sounds like a win win to me so reach out to agents reach out to builders reach out to fisbos so agents inside your office agents outside your office for sale by owners um builders i mean dr horton i've never asked them if i could market one of their properties and had them say no as of late like when they first you know came on the scene they were very protective over their marketing and then they wised up. So reach out to them. It's easy peasy. And you can start generating leads right away with one caveat. You'd need a website that has some sort of lead capture or call to action, some sort of a mechanism by which leads can enter into a sales funnel. They can fill out a form for more information. They can click a button to register, whatever the case may be. You need some sort of uh, competent, modern CRM technology. I prefer an all-in-one system at our brokerage. Um, we're using Boomtown. It's a website, CRM. It's got all the database bells and whistles on it. It's got AI. I mean, it's got all the stuff. So it is uh, a highly competent system. It's really the hub or the mainframe that that runs um, or should run, I should say, uh, a real estate agent's business. But as we make this shift or really even before we start to get out there and start to create our own content, I think it is uh, fair uh, for everybody to hear this warning and to heed it because I see this time and time again. I'm not sure what it is. The only thing I can come up with is that agents just, it gives agents security to know that they're generating leads and that they have leads in their database, even though they're not touching those leads, they're not calling them consistently, they're not emailing them information, they're not doing research on their behalf without being asked and emailing it to them, they're not sending them text messages, uh, they're not trying to reach out via Facebook Messenger or, or social media DM. They're not sending video, little short video text messages, just you know, putting a face with a name. They're not doing any of that stuff. The leads are just registering or being added to the sales funnel somehow, and they just sit there. Collect dust. And if that is the case, and if you're not even going to set the lead up on a property trip or an e-alert or an email property blast, whatever your CRM or whatever your technology refers to it as, what's going to happen? I mean, this is, real estate is a contact sport, okay? So if we don't make contact, if we don't proactively get off our butts and try to foster, um, nurture, maintain relationships with people, then we need to wonder why I think, or we need to heavily scrutinize why it is that we're in a relationship business. Um, it, it baffles me. So if you're not prepared to do what it takes to convert these leads and the conversion process is simply this, it is a relationship building process. That's what conversion really means. If you're converting um, somebody you don't know into a contact, that means you're building a relationship. That means trust is being established. Rapport is being built uh, with that person. And the further along you take them into the funnel, the deeper that relationship should get, which is why you hear people say often that the relationship should not end at the closing table. It should begin. You know, this is a lifetime value, an LTV, 
of each person that goes into our database. They're all um, valuable in their own way. They all have something to offer us. And in order for us to sustain this relationship, we need to have something to offer them in return. A lot of times that's just taking an interest in them, checking in on them. That's how we provide value. Being a good listener, um, somebody who is there to provide support and service as needed. And that could be something as simple as referring them a plumber that you know that's going to take good care of them, a painter that you know that's going to do a good job, not leave a mess. You know, the people that take vendors that take pride in their work, uh, which that is potentially a bigger challenge, I find, uh, than converting leads. But let's talk about what it takes to convert leads. All right. And I am a data driven agent. I believe in studying the data and following the math. Okay, so follow the math where it leads. Trust me, it leads you to the promised land. It leads you to um, exponential results. It leads you to a business that is growing at scale and not a snail's pace. Um, you know, just a side note, that's why you'll, you'll uh, if you start networking and going to real estate education events and conferences, you know, and, and rubbing shoulders and elbows with some of the top agents around the country, You'll you'll see a couple things. You'll start to recognize a couple things. Um, how fast their trajectory from zero to sixty, or from zero dollars to you know getting upwards of a million million plus in GCI. You know it happens. Uh, you know that it can happen that quickly, depending on your level of commitment. Um, but you'll hear a lot of them just say like they are. They track and measure. They're data driven. They follow the math. Uh, they study the numbers, not just average days on market, average sales price, average sold price per square foot. Um, but what are they doing? How are they performing? How many appointments have they set this day, this week, this month, this quarter? How many of those appointments led to signed agreements? How many of those signed agreements led to closings? You know, they know how many no's they've got to hear before they're typically going to hear a yes. They know how many dials or touches it takes on average for them to get a lead on the phone. And the NAR data last time I checked is, you know, the average attempt that agents make is one. And I really feel like that's probably too generous. I think the number is probably should be like zero or maybe like a 0.5 because I feel like these agents when the leads come in, they email them or they'll text them. They will not call them more times than not. More often than not, the agents are going to, they're going to um, lead with a passive prospecting method, like calling, I'm sorry, like texting or emailing, not calling. Okay. And so the data, so what does the data show us? What does the data tell us? That one attempt, certainly not one email attempt is going to get the job done. OK, these agents need to have a combined effort that includes all three methods, call, email, text, upwards of seven touches, seven to 15. You know, some people say six to eight, you know, then there's the seven to 15 camp. I really feel like this. If you can get if the average is one and you can get the one up to six, things are going to begin to change for you. I can't tell you how many times agents have come to me and said, you know, you're right. I got to that six or eight touch and man, that's when the magic started happening. So don't give up on them too easily. Don't just write them off after you send them an email and they don't reply. Okay. I mean, they don't know you. They don't know what your intentions are. Um, they don't know what kind of agents you are, agent you are. They don't know if you are um, more interested in service or selling or what kind of skills you have, marketing, market knowledge, problem solving, conflict resolution, they don't know. They don't know, okay? And until they get to know, um, you, they're gonna treat you um, with, you know, they're gonna have a guarded approach. They're gonna be a little apprehensive about getting into a relationship with you. So let's just recap here, all right? So it is very I would say simple, maybe not necessarily easy because it's not easy because it requires preparation. It requires practice. It requires 
the act of doing as opposed to the act of knowing. So getting out there and playing with your camera and shooting videos, um, getting creative, you know, testing out different angles and lighting and, um, you know, just different methods. What's, what, what, do, what is the content that people seem to dig most? Is it like they love your master bathroom content? They love kitchen, kitchen content. They love outdoor living space content, you know, tracking the analytics, you uh, viewing the Facebook insights on that stuff and, and keeping up with it. Um, you know, I just, I don't know anybody who is a professional at anything, uh, life, business, sports, music that got to the place of mastery or expertise or, you know, um, you know, really got a deep understanding, a deep product knowledge of whatever it is that they do or service they provide, you know, you got to study. You know, I've even got, you know, a couple of students that I'm working with now, um, really more than one, like three students. Uh, they're in college or grad school. Uh, they know they got to study in order to graduate, but they come into the real estate industry and they don't do their homework. They don't study the market. They don't study the process. They don't study the contracts. And make no mistake, if you are, if you have a void of knowledge, um, it's going to make you less confident. OK, so if you if if you're so focused on converting an Internet lead into a viable buyer, but you don't know in the back of your mind, you're just scared to death. Like, what if what if this buyer finds a property while we're out showing this afternoon and wants to write an offer? What then? And that fear is going to mess with your confidence. All right. So you need to study your contract, study all the documentation. The complete contract package, both sales and listing. Get up every day and study the market numbers. You know, have a hot sheet set up for your backyard, your 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 zip code, or maybe you're in a giant subdivision. Track what's going on in and around you, um, and then you know, run some searches. Check out a couple of the hot subdivisions. See if there's any new listings. See what's expired. See what's come back on the market. See what price reductions are out there. You know, take a look at this data. Your association is going to put out monthly data. Uh, there might be a college or another institution that studies the real estate market data in your marketplace that's going to put out a weekly and or monthly or bi-monthly report. Study those. Go to your big news outlets. Typically, they all have a money section. Uh, sign up for emails from places that I really like, like Mortgage News Daily that tells us what's going on in the marketplace, not just what's happening in the world of interest rates. There's just so much information out there, but so many agents want to put the cart before the horse. So let's just address that. I mean, why is that? The reason is that this is 100% commission-based business. It's sink or swim. Most agents that come into this business don't have a great deal of reserves. They don't have a great deal of savings. Instead of six months, it's more like three months. And so you might as well just tip over an hourglass and, and the sand running out represents, you know, their depleting savings and it stresses them out. And so they're like, I can't sit in the office, a home office, a coffee shop, studying the MLS and studying contracts and watching YouTube videos and listening to podcasts, reading books, signing up for webinars and completing webinars and you know, working with my mentor or a coach or whatever it is, I need to be out there selling. And the reason I know this so well is because I was that person. I was that agent. I didn't have time to prepare. I only had time for the opportunities. The problem was when the opportunity presented itself, I wasn't prepared. And so I lost more of those opportunities than I gained. And it was a problem. And this was a, uh, a cycle of dysfunction that went on way too long. Okay. Okay. It went on for nearly four whole years, okay, give or take a few months, and it was painful. It was painful for me, uh, painful for my wife. Um, it was very discouraging, and I almost like uh, a lot of you are probably contemplating now. I was, I had made up my mind to throw in the towel. I was done going back to the real world. Um, gonna trade freedom for comfort. And I nearly made that big mistake 
Uh, but it was the, um, you know, the grace of a mentor that, that helped me guide me out of that very bad decision, which is the only reason why I sit here before you today, able to tell you, uh, or help you learn from my mistakes to not follow the road that I took. Um, and we really can't afford it, you know, with, with all the volatility in the market. I mean, we're talking about the shifting market, heck the market's always shifting. Always. It's always in a shift. There's always pockets too, where it's hot over here, it's slow over there, and price reductions here, and multiple offers over here. It's just crazy out there. No one market is the same. Uh, no one market's identical. And even within a zip code, there could be an equilibrium market, a buyer's market, and a seller's market all happening simultaneously. It just depends on factors like supply and demand. Okay. Uh, where are people, where is the hot, it, trendy place? These hot, it, trendy places, a lot of times, they are insulated from market shifts. Um, second home markets are not. You know, there's a lot of purging right now going in, on in the short-term rental market. People are cashing out, taking that equity that they've gained over the, the, um, the acceleration of the COVID market, and they're cashing in, they're going to sit on it, and they're going to... Uh, wait and see what happens with the market and probably reinvest and get some, some better deals. Um, so we're seeing that happen. So let's close this out. Um, we haven't had anybody uh, join us. So we're not going to have any questions on this particular call. If you are watching this, I will say this. If you're watching this, you want to join these calls. All you got to do is reach out to me via social DM call, text me 251 583 9728. You can send me an email, jason at jasonworldrealestate.com. If you see this on a social media platform, just comment with your email address and I'll send you a calendar invite and we can get on, on these calls. Uh, it's hard for agents to get on these calls and consistently get on these calls because they are still in the zone of fear and they're not in the zone of potential. And that's okay, but it's okay to skip. It's here. I'm sorry butcher that. It's okay to suck. It's not okay to skip. Okay. So just because you're, you're still paralyzed by fear and you've still got a very healthy fear of the phone so much so that maybe you're paralyzed by it. You're not going to experience a breakthrough by sitting on your hands. You need to listen to other agents express their struggles. Maybe something will click with you and go, gosh, I'm not alone here. These other people are scared just like me. They're struggling just like me. They're they're struggling with objection handlers just like me. They're procrastinators just like me. They make excuses just like me. They listen to negative voices more than positive voices just like me. And I have already said, I was one of you. Fought through it. Fought through the fear. Fought through the paralysis. <laughs> fought through the ego. Fought through all of it. And I'm standing here before you today as somebody who is not scared of market shifts or market volatility, because there's no such thing as a good market or a bad market. There is only how we respond to the current market conditions. How do we respond? Do we respond with scarcity or do we respond by examining, identifying the opportunities that, is, that exist? Because as market conditions change, so do the opportunities, okay? So do the lowest hanging fruits. You know, they, they, they shift and we have to shift our, um, our actions, our perspectives, our strategies as the market shifts. And you learn how to do that and then you're no longer afraid. Real estate no longer looks like uh, just a, an industry you get in to make some quick, ca quick cash while the getting's good. You know, it's something more for the long haul. All right. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, I'm available for, for questions, uh, comments, feedback. You got some training needs. Let me know. You want to schedule some one-on-one -on -one time? Because one thing I do know is that some people don't like to get on these calls and voice their opinions and their questions uh, publicly. They're, they're embarrassed. I mean, this, this, this is the big E myth in real estate, this embarrassment that we need to get rid of. Uh, we need to all stop being embarrassed because we're all going through the same stuff or we've all been there, done that, all right? So it's time to pay it forward uh, and together we can achieve more. So reach out to me one-on-one -on -one time though. I'm fine with it. DinaFussell.com, get on my schedule 
and let's start getting you on the path to a breakthrough. All right. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week.